want to thank everybody for joining us this evening. It's you know it's funny. Um, Mr. Fobble got on the uh, call and hope wish everyone that they had a happy Thanksgiving. And you know what? It seems like it's forever ago already to me. It's only been a week, but I hope everybody did have a good holiday and they got a few days off and some rest and relaxation. We are so glad that you joined us here tonight um, on the call. I know people are still busy. I know I have a friend whose son is in theater. We got basketball going on. We still have uh, football going on. So thank you so much for taking that time out of your busy schedule to join us. I'm going to go ahead and um, introduce our host. I'm very, very excited for our speaker tonight. He is just hilarious. And he's just a wonderful gentleman. Um, I like to think I can call him my friend. I just think he's wonderful. Um, but I'm going to go ahead and introduce our guest, I mean our host. If you don't know this gentleman, he is an executive consultant in our business. He's earned his way onto a five-star trip. He's been on the cover of Success From Home magazine. He is a business owner in his own right. He's had several, uh, a graphic design company. He sold for several, several million dollars. He's a, he was a restaurateur for a, a little while. He is a musician by trade. He has a music box business. And um, he is just amazingly creative. He's brought us the 3 by 4 and the Purge Call on Sunday nights, which I encourage everyone to get on. And without further ado, I'm going to introduce my dear friend and mentor, Mr. Richard Lather. Richard, are you there? Yes, I'm here. Hopefully the technology is good. Can you hear me okay, lovely? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you. Fantastic. How was your day today, Michelle? Did you have anything happening today? Oh, you know, you know, it was it was good. It was lovely. It was a little okay, well, we won't go any further. <laughs> we won't go any further into that. I'm not going to give you a little secret away, but Michelle and I were having a little bit of a giggle earlier on, and nobody texted me what was Michelle doing today because I promised I won't ask the question, but text me anyway. Michelle, I won't embarrass you. Don't worry, I won't put you under the bus. But um, did you have a good day, that one, and uh, your um, experiences this morning? Yes, I had a great day. And no, it was a really good busy day. I've gone all day. Working, working, working. You know, you got to keep that, uh, got to keep moving, keep working. Well, I know of, uh, of everyone in, in my team, I know you're probably the hard, hardest working in there, out there and hustling and stuff. But uh, thank you for, uh, as always, helping um, and emptying this call. I, uh, you're always wonderful for, for doing that. You always say such lovely things at the beginning of the call. I know you don't mean a word of them, but uh, it's lovely to hear them. <laughs> Well, I hope my check's in the mail. <laughs> oh, my goodness me. Well, welcome, everybody. It's um, 9 o'clock here down in, uh, in uh, Texas. And uh, for those of you up in New York, it's nearly your bedtime. Hopefully, you're dressed up in your little mermaid pajamas and you've got your little teddy bear and your hot chocolate ready for bed. And for those of you in California, I know you just finished your lunch. You're out there on the beach in your, in your Speedos and stuff. So uh, hopefully, you're uh, coming in and, uh, you know, Getting off, getting all the tan lotion off your body before you sit down and listen to us talk. But uh, I kind of like to create a little bit of a visual for you all out there. But here we are in Texas. That's some great weather today. It's been really kind of mild. I've been uh, driving around myself. I was down in Arlington today with a business presentation, and uh, it's been a great day. But uh, thank you very much for all getting on the call. Uh, and give yourself a little congratulatory pat on the back. Put your right arm over your left shoulder. Give you a little pat. So we're uh, taking out a little time to um, just gather a little bit more knowledge, a little bit more information um, to help you with your ambit business. Uh, the, the, the Wednesday calls are different than the Sunday purge calls that I do. Sunday's very, very specific. It's very this, do this, then do this, then do this. And it's very specific and a very live, real scenario. And that's the Sunday Purge call, um, which if you haven't been on, make sure you get on. It's a, it's a great call um, for kind of learning what to do on a day-by-day -day basis. This call is a little bit different. Um, it's still an opportunity for training, but it's kind of based around a conversation between myself and another leader in the business. And we kind of um, just talk about, Ambit. We talk about what they've done in Ambit, the successes they've had, the failures they've had. We kind of like um, we like the nitty gritty. We like everything. Uh, if you see me promoting this, you'll see that I'm always talking about I like to get to the nitty gritty because I want to hear how things went right and I want to hear how things went wrong because I guarantee both of those things are going to happen to you if you're running your Ambit business. So uh, tonight's going to be no different. Um, uh, my guest tonight. Sometimes I had guests, so I don't know very well. This guy I know. Um, very well indeed. In fact, uh, we've been running together pretty much since I started in business eight years ago, uh, back in the days when I was an MC. I think he was an, an SC, I think, when, when I first joined. But this was back in the days when um, national consultant Brian McClure had a training center up here in Irving. And uh, 
it seems like forever ago, um, and we were going to these these huge business um, presentations in Dallas, and then they, the, all the prisons presentations kind of split up and divided up into these small little ones around Dallas, and now they seem to be kind of coming back to a, another big um, presentation we have in Dallas, and we kind of combine a, a Spanish and an English presenta- business presentation, and, and all of you on this call... Um, or in the DFW area, if you if you haven't been to the DFW business presentation, you really should go. It's 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 got such a great new format that uh, Jared Abshire and uh, Doug Parker have put together, where it's an English and Spanish presentation. It's really really good to take any new prospects, um, uh, whether they are either you know Spanish speaking or English speaking. It's great to to, to kind of hear the whole presentation done in that way. It's a big presentation because we have both communities there, so make sure you get there. But this particular gentleman um, is uh, sometimes very involved with the presentation down here, although most of his business, I think, is really taking off up in the Northeast. But I want to bring him on the call. Again, he's, uh, I, I'm very happy to call him a very close personal friend of, of mine. Our families know each other very well. We've had uh, holidays together. We've had... Um, uh, dinners together on many, many occasions. And so I'm absolutely delighted to bring on the call executive consultant, Mr. David Belmar. Are you there? Senor, como estas? David, please be there. Okay. I think you're muted. So what I'm going to do, David, just let's, just bear with me a second. I can get to the wall and I can unmute you. So you don't have to do anything. Stay right there. I'm clicking it right now. It should be unmuted. David, are you there? I'm here, my friend. I'm just happy uh, to be here in the call. Thank you for having me. Can you hear me now? I can hear you now. Como esta, señor? Muy bien. Excited. I mean, I'm so excited to be here tonight in the call with all great friends uh, from Ambit Nation. So excited. How are you now, doing? You're up, in, yeah, I'm doing fantastic. you're up in New York right now, right? Yes, I am. I'm in New York City, the Big Apple. Having a blast. So, so what, what's the weather like up there? It's been really kind of mild today. What's it been like up there? Oh, it's been very nice. It's in the in the fifties. Very nice. It's been a wonderful sunny day. And I, I was listening to you on the call uh, talking about the people in New York at this time of the evening being on pajamas and getting ready to <laughs> drink the hot chocolate. It's not like that, my friend. <laughs> We're just waiting to for this call to get over with so that we can hit the streets in Manhattan and have a blast, have fun up to the early days of the poison. <laughs> no one works like the people from New York. You guys up there work like crazy, so I know how busy you guys are. But uh, listen, I heard the other day. I saw. I, I heard amongst the kind of um, the grapevine that you've been voted the sexiest man in Ambit. Did you know that? <laughs> I don't know. That, I think the only person that thinks that is my wife, my lovely wife, Arlene. I think she's the only one that thinks I'm sexy. You know what? It's just as well she has some poor eyesight because we both know that you're not very handsome. I mean, she's, you know, she, bless her little cotton socks. I mean, she's, she's lovely, to, lovely to love you the way you do because she's an absolute stunner. I know she's missed Puerto Rico and she's hanging around with you. I mean, I mean you, you really kind of lucked out there, right? <laughs> Trust me, I, I know I know that myself. I've always been very lucky um, when I've had someone on my arm as a permanent partner. I've always been uh, very lucky to have a girl that's way too attractive for me. So I know I know the club that you're in. It's true. I did hear you on Sexiest Man Lambert. So congratulations on that award. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're going to get interviewed on Ellen at some point. But um, let, let's kind of dive straight in after the call because I'm real. Cause this, yeah, we've got a whole bunch of people. We got this is a big call, David. I think um, uh, I, obviously you're very popular. Um, we've got a lot of people on the call right now from all over the place. And I think there's a lot of people on here I don't know um, their names. I don't know who they are. So there's going to be some people out there, surprisingly enough, who may not know who you are. So you're obviously an executive consultant in the business. Obviously you're the sexiest man in Ambit. But also more than that, I learned so much from you. In the beginning, you're one of those people that have really built an Ambit business right. You know, no matter the position that you've been in, you've not done anything other than the system. And I think even as a senior consultant, you had a massive business. But uh, before we get into that, I'd really love people to kind of know a little bit about who you are and 
um, where you come from, obviously you have a little bit of accent there, how you came ac- across such a beautiful wife and how you got into the business. If you wouldn't mind just kind of giving us a, a little bit of an intro on you, that'd be great. Yeah, absolutely. Well, you know, I'm a, I'm a father of five. Uh, I'm a grandfather of uh, two wonderful uh, grandchildren. Uh, I'm happily married with uh, uh, my, my lovely bride, Arlene. And, you know, I'm very happy. I, I, I used to work in corporate America for many years. I spent like uh, 30 long years working for corporate America in multinational corporations. Some of them were based out of the U.S. Some of them were based out of Italy. Others were based out of uh, Netherlands. Uh, but I spent all my professional life uh, living in Puerto Rico. That's what I was raised. I was raised in Puerto Rico, so I spent 30 long years working for Copper America. After that, I started uh, uh, my own traditional business with a couple of partners, a small uh, software development company that started with three people that now it's uh, over 120 strong. Uh, and we have business uh, throughout Latin America and the Caribbean. And lately, uh, we have been having some business in, in, in the U.S., in Missouri, in, in Chicago, and, and in Texas. So that, that's been on the, on, the, on, the, on the traditional business side and in the corporate side. I've been, I've been in business for over 40 years. Uh, very, I mean, I had a, a lot of fun working for Corporate America. I enjoyed that very much. I didn't enjoy the hours that you got to put into that. I remember working 70, 80 hours every single week. It was too much, you know, and I... And, and one of the things that I love the most is to spend time with family, with friends. I love to travel. So that was precluded me from, uh, from doing that. And then during that process, a good friend of mine invited me to take a look at the business. I was in Puerto Rico, of course, at the time they invited me to take a look at that. So my obvious uh, response was, no, I don't have the time. I don't have the time for that. You know, I, I, I got a full plate of all the things that I'm doing. So... Uh, Eventually, they insisted so much that I look at the video. I, I was impressed by the compensation plan. I didn't believe it was true. So in order to validate, to do some validation and to do some due diligence, what I did was that I took a trip from Puerto Rico to Dallas, Texas, to get to know the co-founders of the company. And I spent a couple of weeks there with my wife, learning, asking questions, participating in presentations, business meetings, business lunches, all those kind of validation and uh, due diligence uh, processes that you need to go through, I mean, when, when you're in business. And at the end, I was blown away by the expansion plans the company had. So we, we returned back to Puerto Rico, and uh, uh, some months after that, we decided to make a bold move. You know, I had to, do, uh, I had to relocate my family from Puerto Rico to to Dallas, Texas, just to be able to learn and to get started because the business was in three states at the time, Texas, New York, and uh, Illinois. So we started learning. I started putting into this uh, 30 minutes a day, one hour a day at the most because I was, I had to continue to work on my own business and my office was in Puerto Rico in San Juan. So I had to spend three weeks in Puerto Rico, three weeks in Dallas, three weeks in Puerto Rico. So we did that. I was living off the money of my company that I worked for. So I didn't put at risk my, uh, my income, uh, so, but I did have to put the hours. So we were able to, after two and a half years of doing that, uh, Richard, we were able to get my wife off of her work. And she, she was able to retire at a young age, and she has never had to work again every in her life thanks to ambient energy so that's that's quite amazing you know for a, for a part-time uh, business if you put some effort into it and then over the last four years i have put in place a succession plan where i i've been you know almost retired or semi-retired whatever you want to call it uh, and i'm enjoying my life like crazy thanks to ambit and, and and the biggest blessing in this is not only that uh, we've been able to achieve, you know, the financial freedom that allows you, allow us, you know, to live life in our own terms. But the biggest blessing really has been to be able to help other people do the same thing, people that were not even, were complete strangers, Richard. I mean, I, we didn't know anybody in Texas, no one, except the person 
that invited us to, to join the business. And now mm -hmm. we have a huge extended family of close to uh, 7,000 consultants over the years, eight, eight, eight years plus. And that, that's amazing. And that, that's the one thing I've always admired you about, uh, about what, the way you've built your business. Um, I guess there's two questions, really. First of all, because I know a lot of people on the call think, you know, there's no way that I should ask a business owner that's as successful as, success, sorry, as successful as David Belmar, you know, they are a software company. You've been talking, you know, you're up to 120 employees. You know, um, you've had all of the success. You were, you were highly ranked in the military. You know, I would never ask David Belmar to join a business like this. You know, uh, so, so two things. First of all, what do, you have, what, do you, what do you have to say about people being afraid to, to invite someone of your uh, caliber? But secondly, why, why, I know you talked about your time, and I know that's your answer, but what is your attraction to a, a business like, like Ambit compared to that business that you had before? Why, why would you give it the time of day? You know, you've got, it, there's no ego in this business. It's, you know, you've got no employees. You've got no big buildings. You know, people are always impressed with restaurants because, oh, you've got a building, you've got staff, you've got this. Why would a business owner like you be attracted to a, a little business like Ambit? I would say the first, the first and, and foremost is time freedom, time yeah. freedom, okay? That's the first one. And the second one that is related is uh, residual income, residual recession-proof passive income. Yeah. I mean, if we qualify that way, Richard, and you know that because you're a business owner, you're a traditional business owner as well. And, and I remember, you know, some of the things from uh, our, you know, uh, relationship, build, relationship building over the years, you know, and, and, and going around doing training and presentations. I mean, the fact that you had a business valued in millions of dollars that you sold it and, and you were attracted because of the same thing, because of the time freedom and because of the recession-proof residual passive income. That's amazing. I mean, mm -hmm. and that is the key. You see, that's why it's important that uh, we take this business seriously, that we treat this business like a multi-million, like a billion-dollar business, because that's what it is, okay? Uh, you, you see, people have our, you know, people in, in corporate America get distracted, and I'm, I'm, I'm speaking from my perspective. Okay, I cannot speak from other people's perspective, but you see, people get distracted. I mean, I was a general manager for a corporation like a Unisys Corporation. Okay, mm -hmm. had mm -hmm. you know had the big office with a hundred people to you know to you, responsible for a hundred people with uh, different directors reporting to you, two secretaries, you know, a full staff, a huge office on the twentieth floor overlooking the beach overlooking the, the, the business district in Puerto Rico. That gets you distracted because oh, at yeah. the end of the day, I was the first one in and the last one out. Mm -hmm. I, I had responsibility for running a, a $28 million budget every year, and they kept, they kept increasing. Every year there was more and more and more. You got to bring in more business with less and less resources. People don't see that other side of the traditional, you know, businesses or the, you know, corporate America. And no, then all of a sudden... It's very, it's very yeah, impressive. It's very, very good for the ego. You know, it makes you, you know, makes you feel good that you've got, I've got this staff, I've got this big office that's overlooking all of this. And it sounds very impressive. And, it's, and, it, and it feels like, oh, well, Ambit doesn't have that. Um, exactly. <laughs> you know, and, it, and, and, and it, they're right that it, that it doesn't, but I think you, and I didn't mean to interrupt you, but it's just, I like to try and get a training opportunity here. For those sure. of you who are looking to ask a business owner like uh, the caliber of David, and David is up there. He's up there of, as, as high as a business executive as you can get. Very successful. If you want to invite them to look at the business, then naturally, in many cases, you're going to ask for an opinion and this type of thing, but they're hot buttons, and I agree with you exactly here, um, David, is that 
when you can talk about um, with the residual income a- a- aspect and the time freedom aspect. I've spoken to business owners before. In fact, on one of my purge calls, Christy Meck, senior consultant Christy Meck, was chatting to a business owner who had five businesses. And, you know, he was like, well, why would I? He was, he was a little bit, you know, alpha male. Why would I look at a business like this, blah, blah, blah. And I said, how, of, of those five businesses, how many of them give you passive income if the economy drops? And he said, uh, none of them. I said, well, you know, I, I said, I, I agree. And that was what I looked at when I, when I was looking at this business. I saw that my restaurants suffer in a recession. I have to be at my businesses to make it earn some money. Whereas this Ambit business, no matter what happens to the economy and whether I'm at my business or not, I'm making money. And he was like, hmm, interesting. I'd not thought about that. And he stopped being that alpha male and took it and thought, you know what, that's actually a really good point. And it turned into a very, a much more different conversation than initially. So for those of you who are looking to invite um, business owners or, or going to be talking to business owners, really talk about that residual income, recession-proof residual income, and the time freedom factor. And sorry to interrupt you on that, David, but it was just so valuable hearing what you're saying, I wanted to turn it into something really real for people as they're going to go out there to invite other business owners. So I I really appreciate that. Thank you very much. Um, No, that that was great. I appreciate that. that You you hit it right on the nail. That's absolutely correct, uh, Richard. Okay, cool. Go ahead. Go ahead. Your turn. Go ahead. Now, uh, you know, that was one part of the question. Uh, It was... uh, how you approach, and, and, and then what was the other side of the question that you asked? Besides, uh, you know, what attracts uh, business owners or people that are in a high position? There was another um, part of the question. There was another part of the question, like, and it was your, your answer was so good that I've forgotten what the first part of the question No, was. that's fine, but, but you know what? The, the teaching, I mean, the, the training opportunity that you talk just open another window or something that I have not thought about it, which is directly related to what you're saying. You see, you don't know the impact. You know, when we talk about the ripple effect, and I remember that in one of the ambitious, uh, in one of the ambition events that we had, I remember uh, Chris Shamblett talking about the butterfly uh, yeah. effect and all that. I mean, that concept. Mm-hmm. I mean, you don't know the impact it has on someone that one day you decide to pick up the phone and invite somebody to take a look at the business and to do something with this. You know what's going to come out three years from now, five years from now, ten years from now. You see, I've been in the business eight years plus. Now, when I decided to do this, I was just looking for time freedom and and, and financial freedom and to be able to live life on my own terms. But the, the, the process, as, as you go through this process, your reasons keep evolving and changing. You why, the reason why you start this starts evolving and growing. And then you, you start thinking bigger and your horizons keep growing. Mm-hmm. And now, you know, that has completely evolved. It, it's not... It's not anymore, you know, thinking about my freedom, but it's thinking about how I can make an impact on somebody else's life so that they can also enjoy the time and and money free and financial freedom to live life in their own terms. And that's when you start looking at things from a different perspective, not to mention the fact that over the over the course of those eight years that I've been in the business, some of the companies that I used to work have disappeared. Some of the companies have been gone through mergers and acquisitions. Uh, mm-hmm. Some of the companies that I used to work for have gone through a lot of changes. They have uh, gone through downsizing, right-sizing, and, and, and a lot of the, um, and, and different situations. And worse than that, I mean, what happened a couple of months ago in Puerto Rico, I never thought that that would happen. We were hit right. by the biggest storm ever. Uh, you know, there is chaos, you know, because the, the, the complete infrastructure of energy delivery is broken down as a result of that. Mm-hmm. 
Mm-hmm. The island of Puerto Rico has been without electricity for more than two two months now, and it will take mm-hmm. it will take months in order to reestablish the energy service there. And as a result of that, some of my customers from the traditional business have been severely impacted. Yeah. And, and, and if I have not made that decision of doing what I'm doing now, I have been impacted by that as well, severely. And then there are people that are out of a job, not in my company, but some of the companies that are my customers. And there are other companies that I used to work for there that are going through very difficult times. And there are some people that I used to work with them that now they are migrating from Puerto Rico to Missouri, to Texas, to New York, to Florida. Yeah. I, yeah. I didn't see that coming, Richard. I mean, people think that uh, life is going to be, uh, uh, you know, a, a walk in the park all the time. We don't know what's, what's coming up in the upcoming months. Isn't that the truth? I know that uh, very often when I listen to national consultant Richard M. Wado, um, who just actually got back in town, Richard and Mary M. Wado, from Japan, but when I listen to Richard, he always talks about digging your well before you're thirsty, and talk about that being relevant. Um, you know, in 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 the case of, of of people who are in the in the in disaster areas like that, you know, who would have thought that you know those companies that you're talking about in Puerto Rico, you know, uh, the way you think oh, I'm in this big tall building, I've got these great business, I'm I'm really safe. You just never know. You really must dig that well before you get started. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. So, so let's 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 um, one again. What, this was the other part of the question. I remembered what I was going to ask you. So, I, I've really admired the way you build your business, Dave, because you've never been attracted by the pin level. You've always done what's right in the business, and the pin level has come across. And I wish I could say that I had the same thing, but I have to be—I have to be honest that it's, you know that I am attracted by the pin. And sometimes, you know, in my in my uh, regional consultant days, you know, I did a little bit of stacking, which you know that was just based upon pure ignorance that I did that to get myself that green pin of the senior pin. You've never done that. You've always been just built it the right way. And here you are talking about seven or 8,000 consultants in your EC code. I mean, that, that's bigger than many of the nationals who are in the business. And I think even in when you were a senior, you had a few thousand consultants in your business. Is that right? Yes, that's correct. Yeah. So, so, how, so for those of people who are listening, that we, and again, we've got people who have just started, and we've got people who have been in the business a long time. Why don't you talk to that just a second um, about building your business right and doing the right thing, not only from an integral standpoint, but um, uh, from the standpoint of building it right and not, being, not stacking to, to get to the next pin level. Yeah, absolutely. Well, what we're doing uh, really uh, in, the, in the teams that we are building, we are promoting uh, and teaching people to build the business by following, I mean, you know, the normal five to six building block that we have mm-hmm. with, a, with a twist, okay? Uh, we're not getting away from the five to six. We just call it five, three, three. Meaning right. we are promoting people to get, you know, to, to get started. And this is very simple. It's not going to take a lot of time. It's very simple. It's just a matter of get the, the new consultant in, and then we, we teach the new consultant. We take the time with them to get them certified in their own computer or tablet or phone. Mm-hmm. I mean, getting that new consultant, uh, you know, enrolled and get them certified, you know, in order to be able to gather customers. And then we help them get through the process. If they live in an area where they be an avid customer, we get them through the process of get them as their own customer. And then we concentrate on doing the calls with them, just like you teach in, the, in your calls, gather some of the invoices from some friends and family because they're do, they, are do, they need to do some homework, they're doing some um, energy bill analysis, and then we get them in order to get their five first 
account so that they can gather their customers, you know, get their, their five customer points, get, get qualified as a consultant. And after we have done that, we help them do two or three calls in order to set up some appointments in order to start getting the first, what, the first three consultants personally sponsored, and we just follow the same process. Right. This has proven, I mean, when, when, when people are teachable and coachable, it has proven that if we can get one of those cycles for people within one month, this is the ideal situation, one month or less, we can get one new consultant to get their five customer points, get their three personal sponsor, uh, personal sponsor consultants, and then help them get each one of those to get at least the first consultant in, so they promote to regional within two to four weeks if they're teachable and coachable, okay? That is the ideal situation. We're teaching that building block, 533, and we are, instead of concentrating on doing anything else, we're just concentrating in, in building regionals after regionals after regionals, if they, if they give us the opportunity to do that. And, and that builds width and depth, and that builds the fact that you, they can earn weekly bonuses and they can start building a business where the residual income will trail with the growth of the organization. Yeah. And, and that is the, the basic building block that we're using, Richard. Uh, and you know what? I, I completely agree. And, and I, I want to kind of, uh, for those of you who are listening in, if you've got a pen and, pa pen and uh, uh, paper there, I just want to take, again, I look for training opportunities right here, and there was one right there. I know you're, and those of you who are listening on the call, you'll hear it and you go, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. okay, got it, got it, got it. No, no, no. I want you to get it. If you've got a pen and paper, write this down. First of all, David was talking about building RCs is the building block of the business. So think in terms of RCs, not lots and lots of consultants, lots and lots of customers. No, just RCs. Now, you'll also notice that David didn't talk about building in a 526 format. And I agree with that. If those of you who get on my call, um, you'll hear me talk about working in threes and not in twos. And to, 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 to explain why that is, the reason why we go three who get three who get three who get three in Texas, if you're getting three consultants who get two customers each and you go down to seven levels, we've all seen it in the business presentation, there's $11,500 in residual income. If you get two who get two who get two with two customers each, that's $1,600 in residual income. Just by adding one person from two to three, rather than the 526, you go five, three, well, you say 533, three, but 536 three, because you're three, or 539 three, because you're getting three who get three. If you're working in threes rather than twos, you'll make 10 times the residual income by the time you get down to the seventh level. And again, I've taken a little bit of time away from you there, um, David, but I wanted to really make sure the people who are listening to this call are not just sitting back drinking a coffee, going, yeah, this guy's got a great accent, great story. I want you to understand exactly what David <laughs> is telling you. This guy is the master, 7,000 consultants in his business and growing comes from a reason, uh, uh, and, and the reason is he's building RCs with five customers and three consultants getting three consultants. So that's the five, three, three. So forgive me for taking a few minutes there just to qualify what you're saying, but I want to make sure that the people on this call get that because it's just so important, David. No, you, you're correct. I mean, that's perfect. I mean, talk about accents. Uh, where, where else can they get a combination like you and me together in a call? That's quite a full plate of different accents, right? <laughs> Foreigners on the call, they can't understand a word we're saying. <laughs> well, they better they better picture that that you just said, and if they they write it down and they do the circles in that piece of paper, and they follow through to seven levels, they're gonna be surprised. And you know what? I think you you hit it right on the money, because you know here we are, the 29th of November, the the year's coming to an end. And everyone 
is thinking, what else can I do in order to finish the year, uh, to finish the year strong? You know, mm -hmm. there is time for the people in this call that get it, and they just put aside our action and they concentrate on the teaching. They mm -hmm. can do 533 or 539 or 536 between now and December 31st. They can put some money on their bank and they yep. can probably promote, they can help some people promote in their business. In, in preparation for what's coming up with Simon K. Right. But better than that, better than that, Richard, what you just said is you're giving people, you know, a, a way for them to visualize how they can go around and, and work over the next couple of weeks be, between now and the end of the year, not only finish the year strong, but start the new year 2018 strong. And if right. we follow this 533, five, 539, three, 536, five, whatever it, may, it, it would be, I mean, we can have a better 2018, a more profitable 2018, okay? So I yeah. think that was a great, great thing what you just did there, Richard. Okay, good deal. And the only other thing that I think you, you, you talked about and that I think people should really understand is a lot of people, a lot of uh, uh, people in, in Ambit are saying, but yeah, but how do I get them qualified? Where do I get their customers from? Especially now down here in Texas, you know, we had a holiday for a little while, David. You remember back in the day when Ambit was first around, we were just a little peon and, and the TXUs and the Reliance and those companies that are down here in Texas were like, ah, oh, Ambit, who are they? They're nothing. And we had, a, we had a little bit of a heyday because back then, you know, our pricing was so aggressive. It was not very difficult to get customers. But now it's a little harder. They've wised up. They've realized that, you know, Amp is now number two in, in Texas from, a, from a, 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 a company size standpoint as a, a, as a sole company. A lot of people think that Reliance number two, but that's only because they've got, you know, a number of other companies they own, like Green Mountain and Ciro and all these other companies. But on their own... Um, uh, uh, Ambit, the TXU is number one because they've been around for a, a long time and Ambit's number two. Now they see us out there and you see this very aggressive pricing. So people are saying, but so how do I get the, them qualified? How do I get those first two customers? And what you pointed out, and again, for those of you with a pen and paper, this is what David was talking about. Listen carefully. And I know David and I agree on this is that to get your customers, what we do is we do a, a training program. So if you've just signed up a brand new MC and you want to get them their customers, you say, well, we want to teach you how to read electricity bills. So this Saturday, we're going to have a training for learning how to read electricity bills. Uh, just see how many electricity bills you can gather. Get me a TXU. Get me a Con Ed. Get me a, a whatever. Just get me a few bills. Now, they can cross out their personal information if not, if, if they're too worried about it. But see if you can get me somewhere around 10 bills, and we'll practice how to learn how to read the bills. And what's great about that is you take the, uh, the, nest, the feeling that that new MC is feeling they're having to sell people on becoming a customer. We're not. We're just gathering bills to teach them how to read the bills. Right, David? And so, Absolutely. Um, and then once they've, we've learned how to read the bills, some of them we're going to save them money. Some of them we may not, and some of them are going to be on contract. So we give the bill back after the training and say, thanks very much for letting me borrow, the, uh, borrow your bill. That's great. You know, you're on a contract till May. I'll give you a call in May and see if I can save you some money. Those who are on a really good rate right now, I'd say, here's, here's your bill. Thanks very much. Um, I, I got qualified. Uh, thanks very much for letting me have it. Um, you're on a really good rate right now, but your contract's up in, in three or four months. I'll give you a call and see if we can compete then. But then there's a few in there that we save the money and they're not on a contract. How great to be able to give them and say, thank you so much for letting me borrow the bill. I'm now a qualified energy uh, advisor. Thanks so much. By the way, when we were analyzing your bill, you actually could have saved about $32 a month. Um, it, uh, it, it doesn't make it exactly the same electricity, um, and it would be helping my business as well. Um, it probably would make sense for you to become a customer. It's a wonderful way of gathering customers. And again, I stole some time away from you, but it's just that you gave such um, uh, valid points in what you were saying, and I want to make sure it doesn't just gloss over people without them getting it. So, so again, that just nailed, it. just nailed, it, David. Thank you, thank you so much. That's perfect. That's perfect. I hope people are getting, uh, you know, some value out of this call. Absolutely. Okay, cool. So 
here we are. We're at 9.40, so I'm going to keep it just for another two or three minutes because I'm really um, interested to know what your thoughts are about the expansion into Japan and uh, what people should be doing about that and the expansion into Canada. Uh, what should we be doing about that? And the fact that simulcast is just around the corner, um, what should they be doing to, be, to get into preparation for simulcast? Obviously, other than just registering, of course. What, what are your thoughts on our, on our international expansion and the future of Ambit? And then let's talk a little bit about simulcast after that, and then I'll, I'll let you go. Okay, perfect. Well, I think, I mean, there hasn't been a better time ever to be in Ambit, like right now. Right. I just mentioned at the beginning of the call that when I got started, there was only three states. Now there are 16 states, this, this, the country of Japan, and we just got started in, in Canada. Mm-hmm. What we need to be doing is, I mean, it's just my, my opinion. I mean, my humble opinion is I, I'm concentrating on, on working the, the, the business in, in the states that I'm working on, which are New York, uh, New York, uh, Connecticut, Massachusetts, and Texas. Mm-hmm. That's what I'm concentrating. And recently, we just signed up some new people in Pennsylvania recently. Okay? okay? So I'm concentrating on working locally, but at the same way that I'm in the, by the same token that I'm working locally, I'm thinking globally. I'm asking right. the people in the team, who do you know that lives in Japan? Who do you know that lives in Canada? Okay? I don't get, you know, distracted with the international expansion because, you know, as I build my business locally in the U.S. and, and I will get the, the money from the same business in order to invest later in any international expansion, okay? Mm-hmm. But just asking people, who do you know that lives in Canada? Who do you know that lives in, in, in Japan? We got so, a few consultants in Japan. Uh, we don't have anyone yet in Canada, okay? That's fine. Right. I'm not in a hurry. I'm not in a hurry. I'm already contacted people in Canada. I only know one person in Canada, only one person. I already contacted right. him. He used to be one of my four bosses. When I wa- he used to be one of my bosses when I was the general manager for Unity Puerto Rico, as a matter of fact. Now he's a global vice president for another software company out of uh, Toronto, Canada. So he already watched the video. I'm, I'm, in, I'm following it. But I think the, the key is, the, the, the answer to your question is work locally but think globally. Don't get distracted because eventually that will happen. That's the way I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. And I agree. I, I mean, I don't, I don't know anybody in Japan. I didn't know anybody in Canada. I have a few people just starting up in Japan, but it didn't come from me. It just comes from your business. So, I, I, you know, you hear that expression. And, again, what I like, David, is what you don't just say the platitude of, you know, work locally, think locally. You explain what that means. And that's, what I, that's why you're such a successful um, uh, Ambit guy and, and such a successful trainer is because you turn it into real stuff. Basically, build the business where you know, with who you know, and your business, by definition, will grow and grow and grow through people and new people as they join your business, and then someone's going to know someone in Japan. Someone's going to know someone in Canada, and all of a sudden, you know, you have a business in those countries, and they didn't come through you. I know so many of the ECs who've got businesses growing in the, in the, in the uh, uh, countries abroad didn't come from them personally. It came from somewhere down in their team. So, Fantastic, fantastic. All right, so let's just um, uh, let's just uh, quickly talk about simulcast. Obviously, we don't know what's coming, but what are your thoughts as far as, as you said, at the beginning of the call, we're coming to the end of the year. We're going to be starting a new quarter next year. Uh, I think simulcast is January 13th. Um, January 13th, correct. Right. What are your thoughts as we, as we approach um, the end of the year and we go into simulcast? What should people be doing? Let's say an MC and an RC and an SC. What should they be doing as they head towards that, uh, that major event? Very simple. I think people need to get uh, plugged in. People need to connect with their why. They need to have a burning, uh, I mean, burning desire. They, they, need to, they need to connect with their upline that is plugged into the system, get mentored, and, you know, a, a, a very simple thing. This is the best time of the year for show the plan, show the plan, show the plan, show the plan, show the plan. Make sure that you 
are registered for simulcast, and as you're bringing in new people into the team, uh, encourage them to sign up for simulcast because today is the 29th, okay? Uh, the, the current uh, cash crops uh, promotion will end at midnight uh, Friday night, and we will wake up on Saturday with a new promotion. I, I don't have any, 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 any info, inside information because none of us have inside information in the field, but mm -hmm. for some reason, I, I have a great expectation that the, this company is going to do something great that is going to get us to work like we like our hair is on fire during the month of December in preparation for uh, simulcast. Uh, the other thing that is very important that is a little bit related with your previous question, I just, it just popped up in my mind as I'm responding to this question, is the fact that the people in, in this call should keep in mind the fact that uh, there's a huge difference between the market uh, from Japan and Canada because there's no time zone huge difference between Canada and, and the U.S. like there is between Japan and the U.S. On the right. other hand, you can get a lot of, there's a lot of people that live in Canada that knows people in the U.S. and vice versa, a lot of people in the U.S. that knows people in Canada and consultants that get, uh, you know, enrolled, uh, they get started in Canada, they can, they can enjoy the, the fact that they become uh, founding consultants and they can enjoy the open enrollment, meaning they don't have to pay the $75 to get in, the one-time fee plus the $24.95 for the first month. Mm -hmm. uh, so that, that's, that's a huge difference. And on the other hand, consultants in Canada can get certified in the U.S. They can gather customers in the U.S. and vice versa. So that's a huge difference. So we should get everyone registered for simulcast. We should get plugged in. We should get, uh, you know, be out in the street showing, showing the plan as much as we can so that we can start the year strong. The fact that uh, Samantha is gonna be the 13th of January, it will work towards our advantage we, because that we will have more time uh, to build the business right after the, the holiday. Yeah, I, I agree. And that, what I'm encouraging for my team is to just get, if you're an MC or an RC or an, uh, no, an MC or an RC, um, no matter where you are in that code, you can absolutely promote by simulcast. And let me tell you why you want to do that. And I know you'll, you'll concur with this, David, is because there's, we, no one knows, but very often as we come out of these big events, there's a, usually a big promotion like a triple bonus or sometimes for attendees only, quadruple bonus. And I'm not saying that's going to happen, but it might do. The difference between a, a, a triple and qu or quadruple bonus as an MC as compared to an RC is massive. An MC on a triple bonus is going to make 300, but, an, uh, but as an RC, you're going to make 465. If you are a, an RC and you can promote to SC by the time um, maybe a triple bonus comes around, you're going to go from four. 65 or 470, I can't remember which one it is, up to $705. It, that's the difference between uh, an RC and an SC um, bonus, triple bonus. And if for those of you who are SC out there that can get to an EC, as ECs will make $945 as a triple bonus. So there, if that isn't an incentive to promote, I don't know what is. So I, I don't know what your thoughts are about that, David, but I'm a, I'm a big uh, advocate that it's a great target to promote by those big events absolutely absolutely and if you look at the success from home magazine the, especially the the Amit millionaire club i mean if you go to page uh, i don't remember 40 46 uh, whatever it is yeah i mean and, and you look at the million dollar club uh, of Ambit energy you will see all these people that are making multi-million dollars in Ambit. all of them have one thing in common. They have never missed an ambition uh, event or a simulcast event as they have been in the business. So right. that, there's, a clue. there's a clue there. Everyone that is successful in this company is because they are plugged into the main events and to the monthly events and to the weekly events. Yeah. Uh, like I've never missed one. I know you've never missed one. 
um, you know, you'll see that um, the percentage of executive consultants that turn up to the big events is massive. It's like 90% or something ridiculous as compared to MCs, which is a lot less than that. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's a little bit of a clue there, as you're saying. So, well, David, I mean, I don't want to take any more of your time. We're, we've been on this call a little while, but when the call is as good as this, I'm going to keep you on for as long as I can. But um, I want to give you kind of like the final word um, for those who are listening in just to kind of sum up, you know, your, your thoughts on the future for Ambit, how excited you are for the business, you know, over the next, you know, uh, four, three to five years. Um, and, uh, and then, you know, I'll, I'll, I'll say goodnight, but just give you the final word um, on your thoughts on the future growth for Ambit and, and how excited you are for the business. Thank you, Richard. I really appreciate the opportunity of you having me in this call. It's an honor to share uh, the stage with you in live or, uh, you know, on a call. So... <laughs> Uh, it's always great. Uh, all I can say is that I, I mentioned the fact that this is the best time ever to be in Ambit. It's because, you know, uh, if a company that started only in Texas 11 years ago had been named for fifth consecutive year, the largest direct seller of energy worldwide, there's another, there's another clue there. Now we are growing internationally. I mean, this company is, is going to go to $6 billion before 2020, and this company, for sure, there's no doubt in my mind, will go to, to become the number one largest direct seller company overall in the world. I agree. And, and we, we're standing right here, and in order to, to make that come to pass, we just need to work on ourselves. And the, one of my great mentors in this is Jim Ron, and, and I love to close always with this kind of uh, uh, teachings that I learned from him. And it's, if you would change, everything will change for you. And for all of us in this call and the people that couldn't make it to the call, this is a true. <laughs> it is a reality. And if we want to have more, we, we, we need to become more. Otherwise, we'll never be able to, to have more if we don't become more. And then thinking about ourselves, uh, I mean, success is something that we attract by the person that we become. So I, I wish you all a, a very, a very uh, happy holiday season. Uh, I'll, I'll be flying to, to Dallas tomorrow. So for those of you that are there, you know, I'm looking forward to seeing you there. Probably I will get a little bit late because uh, it'd be too tight to get that by seven to the, to the business presentation, but probably I'll get there by the end. And I'll see you, Richard, and I see everyone on the call. And, and next week I'll be back in, in New York because there's just too many things going on here. My lovely wife and I will spend Christmas here in, in Manhattan, and then we're going to uh, Atlantic City. And all of that is thanks to this, great ambient opportunity. So God bless you all, and I see you on the top. Fantastic. Thank you so much. I, I really appreciate you getting on the call, David. I mean, you're, I know your time is, uh, is very short. You're so busy, obviously, with, you know, 7,000 consultants. That's a lot of phone calls you're getting during the day, so I appreciate your time. Thank you very much for getting on the call. Thank you, my brother. All righty. Okay, well, I'm going to finish up the call here right now. Um, I just want to remind everybody that we've got uh, the purge call coming up on Sunday. It will be Jamie's uh, second week. Um, she's having a fantastic week, by the way. Um, I'm going to be posting the accountability calls uh, sometime in the next 24 hours. I've been having some technical issues over the last few weeks with my computer, but um, I'll have those all up. Make sure you get on the call on Sunday. She's had a fantastic week. Great training opportunities have been there. And for those of you in the DFW area, um, we have our Christmas party next Wednesday. Um, if you want to make sure you get an evite or an invite, um, please get in touch with senior consultant Christy Meck, who, uh, bless her little cotton socks, always takes her time out to um, take care of the, um, the monthly um, dinners that we have. Thank you very much, Christy. But you can email her at Lone Star Christy, which is L O N E S T A R Christy, K R I S T I. So Lone Star Christy. Christy, K-R-I-S-T-I, at gmail.com. Drop her an email and she'll send you an evite. But I'll also be putting an invite up on the EC Riders Facebook page, so make sure you get to, to see that. Um, for those of you who are out of state, um, gosh, I wish you could be with us. 
Um, but uh, hey, I can't be. Um, uh, I'd love to be on the omnipresent, but I can't do that. I'll, I'll do my best. I'll practice every day. But uh, for those of you in the DFW area, I'd love to see you there. So uh, again, I'm gonna um, uh, I'm gonna uh, have the call unmuted. So everybody, hold on. We need to make that a. Okay, so I just wanted to make sure everybody can get on the call and say good night to David. Good night, everybody. Thank you for getting on the call. Thank you, Richard. Thank you, Thank you so much. Thank it was you, a great call. Great call. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you both so much. Thank you. Thank you, Richard. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great call. Thank great you. call. Thank awesome call, both. Thank hey, you. good friend, Richard. Excellent call. Thank you. Thanks, Ivan. Good night. Great call, guys. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Take care.